Well, it's a war story. In August of 1945, I was stationed at Travers Air Force Base in California. And when Tojo, when the Emperor surrendered in late August of 45, um, they sent all our airplanes over to Okinawa, where at that time we were flying the C 54s, the four engine DC 4s. They sent most of us to Okinawa by the occupation troops into Japan. Uh, when we got that done, they called for volunteers to go to Calcutta, India, to fly our, uh, our uh, force, some of them out of China, mainly Kunming, uh, to deactivate some of our forces there. So I had a brother at that time that I knew was stationed in Burma someplace, and so I volunteered to go to India with an airplane. And we went to Calcutta and were based at the British Air Base Barrackpore in Calcutta. And from there, we were supposed to fly direct to Kunming in China um, to evacuate some of our troops to uh, um, important in India. Anyway, uh, on my first trip into Kunming, I inquired around if anybody knew Lieutenant Avery, uh, Richard Avery. Well, yeah, but everybody seemed to know where he was based. So, we had a check pilot on that first trip, and I asked the check pilot to take the airplane back to Calcutta, and I would join him back there in, well, I didn't know when, but soon. Anyway, anyway, that evening about, 30 or so, I got on a C-46, that's a pretty big twin-engine cargo plane, They're made by Curtis Wright, and took off to this base in Burma. I can't even remember the name. It's a long name, and I never was able to pronounce it even then. Anyway, about 11 o'clock at night, we landed at that base in Burma. Over that part of the mountains, uh, the tops were about 16,000, and the service ceiling for the C-47, the DC-3, and the C-54, were about 16,000. So, along the way, they had, uh, they had stationed uh, radio beacons, and uh, they were pretty reliable when there weren't any thunderstorms, but with those radio beacons, 
those airplanes, those twin engine airplanes, could make it through, through the valleys or through the gaps in the mountains. Um, but they had to get right up to their service, sailing of 16. The C 46s could go to 17,000. But uh, they, were, they were at the limit of their endurance. Anyway, we landed. I did land with this C-46 at this base in Burma, and I asked in operation where Lieutenant Avery was. They said, well, he's in this Basha up so-and-so. And somebody gave me a ride up to Basha. These are, these are coconut palm huts. Uh, everything was coconut palm buildings. So uh, I went to his boss and somebody there said, no, he's over the club paying cards. So I walked over to a club, another another uh, palm to the palm branch structure. Uh, it's all open, of course, uh, on the sides. <coughs> I, I, I walk up to the side of the club and I see my brother. His back was to me and he's playing cards with um, some of uh, his buddies. So I stopped to listen to what was going on. And one of his friends was just telling about an older brother who was stationed someplace, uh, who happened to be a, a lieutenant colonel. And Richard pipes up. He says, well, I've got a kid brother. He's got some fat cat job in California. And, uh, <clears throat> Uh, and he's a captain already. Uh, of course, Richard was just a first lieutenant. So I walked in and tapped him on the shoulder. I says, what's your trouble, Bob? Jeez, uh, this is my brother. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't believe. Uh, uh, I'm from California, and here I am. Well, the big story is that Richard had finished all of his mission and was waiting for orders to go down to, um, well, some port in um, India. I think it's, I think it's Pakistan now. Uh, anyway, he said, you've got to fly with me over the hump. I said, listen, I just came over the hump. I've got a summer flying suit on. I'm cold, I'm tired, and I don't want to go anywhere. Yeah. There's, no, there's no saying no to my older brother. He calls operation. Swishes flight with another Czech pilot that has a flight over to Kunming that night. Uh, anyway, uh, I couldn't talk him out of it. So I'm, at about one o'clock, I'm sitting in a C 46 in the cargo department, and I back up against the partition for a load of oil drums in the airplane. Uh, no room up front where there's heat, because now there's three pilots, two pilots, a check pilot, a radio operator, and an engineer. There's no room up front. So I'm in the back, uh, anticipating another flight over at 16,000. 
anyway, anyway, we stopped down the runway. Just as we lifted up the big cargo door on that C-46, blew up. Uh, it hadn't been locked thoroughly. Uh, I thought, my God, I, I couldn't believe what's happening. Anyway, anyway, they landed. They, they knew that little valley like the palm of their hand. And now there's, now there's um, ground fog in the valley now. Um, and there was a beacon on this little alternate airstrip. They circled around, lined up for that runway, let down through that ground fog, hit the runway, went to the end, somebody ran back, slammed the door down, <laughs> They turned right around there and took off the opposite way. <laughs> I couldn't believe what, what was going on. And it, anyway, anyway, we got on course and we got to Kunming just about dawn. And we land, Clark, Richard runs back, he says, We'll only be here about an hour, and we're going back. I said, goodbye, Richard. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with you. So I did get off. I got a ride back to Calcutta. But uh, that experience to me, uh, it didn't show me very much at all. And I didn't see very much of Burma at all. Anyway, that was... Uh, that was my wartime story. <laughs>